When people hear the word first step, I want them to think there are people that believe me and that there are people that have my back and um, that will be able to provide resources for them to help them to get their families to safety. Um, it's estimated that we've served between uh, four and 500,000 survivors uh, in the last 40 years. And that is a really important legacy for this community. So, you know, when you, when you look at the news and you see all the issues that are coming forth with the Me Too movement and more people talking about sexual assault and domestic violence, um, I, think it's, I, I think it's wonderful that, p that people are finally feeling safe enough to come out and to admit that these things have happened to them and that uh, assailants are being held accountable. Um, it's been swept under the rug for so many years and survivors who have come forward have not been believed. And now that people are starting to open uh, and hear that there's so many people that are, that this has, has walked through this experience, I think people are feeling more and more comfortable uh, to, you know, to come forth. And what I want all those survivors to know is that if they need help or support, that they can call First Step, they can talk to an advocate on our helpline, they could get in to see a, a counselor, and um, that support is available if you need help. And um, I think in the beginning, you know, way back in the late 70s, early 80s, um, the police and domestic violence advocates were almost like oil and water. Uh, they were both coming at things from different perspectives, and it was challenging to learn to work together. And I think we've, we've really worked hard to change the laws and the legislation so that um, uh, assailants would be held more accountable and that there would be support for survivors. Um, uh, an example of that is right now we've got programs in several different police departments where the police officers have gone through extensive domestic violence training provided by First Step to identify uh, how dangerous the situation is when they go out on a run. And if, if the survivor answers a series of questionnaires provided by the police officer, a series of questions, and if they score what's called a high lethality score, uh, they actually, the police officer actually uses their cell phone and calls a first step advocate right there on the scene and puts the client in touch with support right there on the scene. And so I think police officers are uh, looking at first step as a resource, um, as a support. And, um, you know, through the years, you know, it wasn't always like that. Um, and um, so we, we, you know, we are really partners in stopping this vicious and heinous crime against, against families. I'm a little bit angry that we're still in business. <laughs> and I think the ultimate goal would be to, if we could figure out how to make domestic violence a cultural pariah uh, and sexual assault a cultural pariah so that no one would do it. You know, I think about the people that worked on uh, Mothers Against Drunk Driving campaign and how they really worked hard to make drunk driving you know, the laws were more difficult and it was culturally not acceptable and people would take your keys away and people would get involved. And I think about if we could do that same kind of movement with First Step to where uh, the community would start intervening when, you know, a young man or young woman started to show signs that they were going to be able to, be, that they would be violent in their life, that they would you know, we would wrap our arms around those people and teach them the right way so that we don't have to deal with this stuff when they get older. Uh, but that would be, then in the next 40 years, I would hope we would be able to um, have a significant reduction in the number of adults and children that are affected by domestic and sexual violence. It has been the distinct privilege of my life to have worked with such amazing people. I've worked for the organization for over 30 years and the countless people that have put in time and energy and money to really make a difference has been just, uh, it's been a privilege for me to work, to work there. Um, when I think about uh, all the contributions that people have done, uh, we've got donors that have given us over a million dollars. Karen Wilson Smith Bauer donated a significant gift so that we could buy our new shelter. And we have staff members that work 24-7 in the middle of the night 
and they go out to hospitals to uh, support survivors of sexual assault. And they're leaving their families, they're leaving their homes because they really care. They're mission driven, they're committed, they're caring. I think about uh, Commercial Real Estate Women Detroit. Uh, it's a group of women that came together to help us build our new shelter. And they did all the real estate planning and the environmental surveys. And uh, they, without them, we could not have built our beautiful new shelter that we have in Wayne. Uh, I think about uh, Lauren Waddington and David Treadwell, who chaired our capital campaign. And they help, helped us to raise $4.5 million so that we could build our new facility. Uh, I think about um, Desiree Herrick, who's one of our associate directors, who's you know, counseled a, a family that lost her, their um, mom when they, were, when they were toddlers. And she's provided support to that family throughout their whole life. You know, these people are there because they really care. Uh, we have staff that, you know, get up in the middle of the night and uh, come in to cover shifts when somebody's sick. And, you know, staff members that just rejoice when somebody, um, you know, moves into a new home. You know, when a survivor is able to go into a place of safety and, and get their own home, our staff and our volunteers and our um, supporters just rejoice and it's just really wonderful to be a part of that. You know, corporations come and they spend time and volunteer. We've, you know, had groups from Ford Motor Company and General Electric and uh, all kinds of organizations come and work on our playground and, uh, you know, build structures on our facility and come in and do painting and whatnot. And uh, we've had groups that have come and provided significant financial support too. So corporations are a really big part of our work. There's been so many service organizations through the year that have supported the work of First Step. Uh, the Zonta Club of Farmington Novi, for example, has done a fundraiser for us for the last 24 years. Uh, the, la the Ladies' Ancient Order of Hibernians does a chocolate affair. Uh, Rotary Clubs have installed things on our playground and all these people make our work possible. Uh, I remember Carl O'Malley, who was on our board, sitting down and we developed our fund development plan on the back of a placemat at a restaurant and to see that you know all these donors and all these staff and all these volunteers and board members were able to come together to make this dream a reality is a real um, it's just a wonderful privilege to have been a part of that and we never could believe that we've that we would have been in such a beautiful building and really transform uh, the the building of our structures to match the spirit of our work because it's absolutely beautiful.